In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make this DIY notebook cover out of a colouring page. So welcome back, if you're new here my channel is all about creative colouring and learning fun tips and techniques that you can apply to your artwork and creative projects. So as we're in the middle of back to school time at the moment I thought it would be fun to do a DIY decorate your own notebook cover type of video. And I'm going to be using a page from the Breeze colouring book and I'm using the Gilded Mirror page which is this one here. And I'm using this page because A it fits the colour scheme that I've chosen uh, to go on top of the notebook but also in this in the mirror here there's lots of space for you to be able to stick a big sticker to put um, you know the name of the subject that you're keeping notes for or just kind of do a little bit of extra customization using some little blank stickers here in the middle so I thought that would work quite well and I don't want to tear the page out of my printed out colouring book so I've printed the page out again and then this is printed out onto three, um, 250 gram I think uh, Bristol board so it's just a nice thick paper and it will take the markers very well and there's an Etsy link to the colouring book in the description box below if any of you are interested and, and it is a digital colouring book so you can print off the pages individually, have them bound up, you can do whatever you like. So as well as the page I've also printed out a version of the um, drawing on computer paper so it's sort of 80 gram computer paper and as you can see the black ink was running out as I was printing it out it's black here and then it kind of goes into grey the ink need the ink needs changing but it, it doesn't matter because what I'm using this page for is a mask I'm planning to do some stamping here in these sections so I need to be able to cut out um, the poppies and mask them off so they don't get uh, stamped and I will show you what I mean a bit later on but that's what I have one sheet one copy of the colouring page onto Bristol board and one copy onto just com regular computer paper. And if you don't want to use this colouring page then you can go ahead and use whatever page you want or print out some digital stamps or draw your own page. You can do whatever you want. Then I have the notebook that I'm going to decorate. This is a stapled A4 lined notebook, just a really average plain line notebook. And you can use whatever size notebook, whatever notebook or sketchbook or binder that you would uh, that you need so it can be any color any any form it doesn't matter anything that you want to decorate so the first thing that I did was to color the image and I'm using my Copic markers and I've picked a muted color palette now the reason I've picked these particular colors I've got a dark green some light oranges some browns a khaki color and a buttercup yellow the reason for these colors is a because they match the kind of the vintage theme that I'm going for the coloring page has a bit of a vintage vibe so I went with that and also because of the color of the notebook and the color of the surface that you're covering is going to be an issue if you're going to have some of the um, surface left showing now because I'm going to layer the coloring page up with some other papers on top of the notebook a lot of the yellow is going to show and so I need the colour palette of my piece to match the yellow and that's one of the reasons why I went for a vintage inspired piece because I felt all the browns and the oranges will match the yellow cover so that's something to bear in mind if you're using a white or a black notebook or a sketchbook then it doesn't matter too much because any, any colours go with white and black but if you're using a coloured one then you just may want to just kind of uh, bear the colour of the notebook in mind as you're picking your colours to colour the image. So I'm not doing too much shading, I'm just being quite quick and putting down nice blocks of colour and trying to make sure that the colours are evenly distributed throughout the piece. So I've pretty much finished with the marker colouring and it doesn't matter if you go outside the lines on this border because we're going to be cutting this out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a mask to put over the drawing. So I have here the drawing and the parts I'm going to cut out I'll just make a quick note. So this, this section in here, this section, this section, this section here are the sections I'm going to cut out because that's where I'm going to be doing some stamping. So I'm going to take I could take a pair of scissors, you can take a very fine pair of scissors, some nail scissors would be a good idea, and go inside and cut out the sections. You can see you have these nice little windows, and if I place it directly over, over the drawing, line it up, 
Then we have a nice mask here. I'm just going to grab a little bit of washi tape just to just to hold it down. So now we're going to get the stamp, and this is from this is just called Script. It's from Kaiser Craft, and I'm going to get the stamp, and I'm going to get my acrylic block. Mount my stamp onto the block by just pulling it off the plastic here. And I'm actually going to stamp on top of the notebook um, just because it gives um, it gives the paper a bit of a cushion so when you you get a better impression if you've put your paper onto um, a block of a pad of paper or anything just to kind of give it a little bit of cushion it helps. So now that I have my script, that's the right way up, I'm now going to ink it up. Now which colour shall I use here? I think I'll use the darker colour and I'm just going to take take the memento ink to the stamp like this and tap it to ink it up and this colour is rich cocoa and then that is all inked up I'm now going to see going to just place it directly down and then hold it down for a few seconds, you've got to let the ink transfer, then pull it up. And then I'm going to re-ink it and do some more, do another impression. So now that we're all stamped, I'm going to set this aside for a second. I'll clean that in a moment. And I'll just peel up my mask. And there. And it doesn't matter if it's got on the border here because we're going to trim this off. But there is the stamped image. Now, you can see the stamped overlapped a little bit there. That was my mistake, but it doesn't really matter. It just kind of adds to the um, vintage grungy feel of this piece. And it's really nice because it looks like the poppies are in front of the sort of stamped background. And that was exactly the look I was going for. And I wouldn't throw away the mask either, um, just in case you ever... Sometimes I keep the masks that I make in case I colour the same... Um, a colouring page again so if you were doing a project where you were doing lots of these then it's quite a good idea to keep the mask and reuse it or um, cut it up because all of this is a really nice um, bit of stamping so you could use that in your art journal or um, on a card or something. So now that we have that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim it and you, you, you could do this with a pair of scissors you don't have to use a scoreboard a trimmer but as I have one that I bought recently if you watched my uh, scrapbooking mixed media supply haul you would have seen this. So what I'm going to do now is to distress the edges a bit. I'm going to take my gathered twigs distress ink, rub my sponge on the edge of the ink and then kind of go like this to the edges. The effect is quite subtle but it is noticeable and it gives it a kind of a nice distressed and you can kind of smear it a little bit on the actual drawing as well. I actually I might just go round, I might just apply the ink directly to the paper here because it's a, it's a very dark colour and sometimes when you're using a very dark colour you can do this. But go in with the sponge first um, and see if that's enough and if it's not go ahead and then take the ink pad and put it directly to the paper. So now the last thing that I want to do with this is to add a few embellishments and then we'll start building up the background. Now this is entirely optional but it makes a nice little touch. I have here a couple of liquid pearls and these are 3D dimensional paint so you can put little, little sort of um, dobs of it on in a little raised lump and it, it doesn't flatten out so you get this nice little kind of raised 3D little spot and I'm going to put them in the poppies where the little sta sta stamens are on the flowers and this is the buttercup one that I'm using here and you can add this to all sorts of drawings and it gives this really nice gold effect okay I'm also going to put a bit up here in this one. I'm just going to fill the whole thing. Put one in the middle of these flowers. You can just kind of go ahead and put them wherever you want. And then I'm going to take the white one and do the dots around the edge of the border. Right. And sometimes they can get a bit clogged if you haven't used them for a while. 
So you just need to take a pin or a thumbtack or something and push it down the uh, barrel to kind of just get it to get it moving again. If you don't have any liquid pearls then using a white jelly roll or white gel pen is a nice way to kind of you could add the dots in with, with, with that instead if you don't have these. That's all dry now and now I'm going to start by gluing and layering up the cover. Now with this notebook here there is this little kind of um, image down here, there's some text there, there's a logo down here and then there's the text in the, in the um, centre. Now I want to cover that all up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer the image because the image is a lot smaller than the notebook and as you can see if I just laid it on like that it would look fine but I don't like that at the bottom I don't want to have that so I'm going to cut this piece of paper so that it leaves a nice yellow border all the way round but it covers up um, these images down here I'm going to trim it down so that the distance there and there is equal. So now I'm going to do one last thing and I'm going to round the corners. This is just another little extra step that you can do if you have a corner rounder you can always do this with a pair of scissors and just round the corners with a pair of scissors if you don't have a, um, a corner rounder. I'm going to glue it onto the back and I'm going to use the, um, the Ranger glue and seal and this is good because it attaches things to your notebook but it also seals them down at the same time so I'm just going to spread this and then I'm going to place it down more or less where I want it and then I'm going to take my bone folder to just to kind of smooth the whole thing out and if, the, if you've got a little escaped glue you can use a baby wipe just kind of wipe it up. Could just glue that on top like this and that would look nice but I want to add a little bit extra. So here I have a 6x6 paper pad. This is Transatlantic Travel but from Cartabella and it's full of these really nice kind of vintage travel-y um, inspired pieces of um, cardstock and I'm going to use this one here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tiny little strip like that all the way along and it just gives it a little bit a little bit of extra interest and, and um, adds to the kind of the vintage look of the piece so I'm going to want about a centimeter or so let me find my ruler oh, here it is yes I'm going to want about a centimeter centimeter and a half so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to trim this down into little into little sections um, just so I can make make the, the most use of the paper. Here I have my strips and now I'm going to attach them using some double-sided tape onto the back of this. Do I have some? I think I have an old one here. Okay. So I'm going to place the double-sided tape onto the drawing right on the very edge like this. Then I'm just going to peel it up and then take my strips of text and place them on so that let's see here yes yeah, so that there is about just under a centimeter about point zero point eight of a centimeter hanging over the edge like this so I'm just going to line them up and trim them off so I'm just going to take the distress ink and just kind of rub the edges a little bit. I'm going to be quite uh, gentle with how I use the notebook. It's not going to get it's not going to get roughed up a lot. But if you're going to cover a book that's going to go into a backpack, or you're covering a binder, something that's going to get a lot of use, and you're worried that the glue and seal might not be quite strong enough, then I recommend using some tacky glue. That's really strong, and that should glue your pages down. Um, really nice and strong so if, if you if you want extra strength use the tacky glue if you're not going to be too rough then you can use the glue and seal or anything like that I would avoid using a glue stick unless it's a really high quality one 
um, just try and get the kind of the strongest glue that you have. So at this point you want to double check to see if there's anything else you want to add to your piece. And this is where you want to add any last minute embellishments, put your label on, whatever, anything like that. So now if you have the glue and seal, one of the things you can do with the glue and seal is to seal it with it. So you just take the glue that you've been using to press to glue it down and just go over the top like this. Now you could just leave it like that. The glue and seal, the glue gives it a waterproof sealant. So that should protect it from your protect your artwork from most things. But what I like to do on top of the glue and seal is to add a little layer of a polythene gloss varnish. And this is just something you can pick up at the craft store. And what that does is give it a nice shiny finish on top of the glue. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to dry it with my heat gun quickly. So now that that's all dry, I'm going to take the gloss varnish, I'm going to take another brush and I'm just going to pour a little bit out into the lid here and I'm just going to apply a little coat of the varnish on top and that just gives it a nice glossy glossy top coat. The alcohol based markers don't run, the memento inks don't run but the distress inks do um, but I, I knew they would when I started and I wanted that extra kind of distressed look all over. So now let's wait for the varnish to dry. You can see it has this nice glossy finish to it. Now there are a couple of pa places in my piece where the paper has not been glued down completely properly so when you're gluing make sure that you go over the whole thing with a smooth layer of glue and properly press it down. I missed a couple of spots but it doesn't matter for me. So I hope this gives you a few fun ideas if you want to decorate your own sketchbook or notebook especially as it's kind of back to school time at the moment. If you are using the glue and seal like I am and you're not going to, I'm, I'm not probably not going to take the notebook around with me, it's going to stay you know, on my desk so it's not going to get as much um, use at not as much use but as much um, it's not going to be carried around and sort of it's not going to get as much wear as if I was taking it in a backpack or taking it out with me if you were doing that then you'd probably want to use a stronger glue to stick stuff down so what the strongest glue you can find the glue and seal is nice because it does seal it um, but if you don't have glue and seal then you can just use a strong glue and the polythene uh, gloss varnish which you can get in a craft store um, and that and that's just to doubly help protect your image and protect things from smearing and and what and just from general wear so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions make sure you leave them down below in the comments give this video a like if you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos i post a new video every week and i will see you all next time with a new creative coloring tutorial and until then have a creative week